Hi, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about measured boot SACI attestation uh, with systemd. I kind of did a similar talk yesterday at Linux Security Summit, um, but this time I only got like 20 minutes, so I'm going to jump right in. Um, so, uh, uh, measurements, like you, I hope most of you know what uh, that's about. Um, uh, just a quick summary um, uh, about the status quo around like what kind of measurements we actually do on systemd-based uh, systems these days. Uh, first of all, there's of course the f uh, firmware, which does uh, most many of the most interesting ones. Then, uh, at least on a UKI system, uh, System D Stub does a couple of more um, that cover things like uh, uh, like the actual components of the UKI that's going to be booted, um, plus all the uh, sidecars that were actually mentioned in the in the uh, talk immediately before mine here. Um, and a couple of other things. Um, then, uh, uh, once the kernel booted and we, uh, InitRD took over, um, a couple of more things are now uh, measured from user space. Uh, this is implemented in systemd in a tool called systemd PCR extent. Um, things like, for example, the machine ID, um, file system IDs like UIDs and things like this, um, as well as boot phases. Um, like. So this uh, is done into different PCRs um, for the purpose of identifying the machine so that you can have TPM security policies that bind to, to the identity of the machine or um, uh, security policies that bind to the boot phase of the system so that you can basically say, I don't know, my disk encryption password shall only be uh, accessible uh, within the NRD but not later. Um, uh, yeah, so we started measuring all these things, and there are not that many PCRs, unfortunately. Um, basically because uh, firmware takes, like, there are basically 15 or something that are up for grabs um, unless you do DTRT. Um, so uh, eight of those are used on by firmware, basically. And then there is IMA, and a couple of them are taken by grub. And uh, that basically leaves four for user space. Um, Systemd has uh, uh, assigned users to all of them. Uh, uh, so, and now we don't have any more. So, but we'd like to measure more stuff because I think for the purpose of uh, remote attestation it's essential that we don't stop measuring things uh, once boot is complete, but we should actually continue measuring during the entire runtime um, uh, the different things that we're going to do on the system. Uh, what precisely we can talk about later. But yeah, we have this problem, we have too few of them. Um, if you look at that uh, uh, link I provided there, this is like a, like a little page we put together which tries to summarize um, uh, uh, which PCR is assigned to what in the Linux systemd open source world. Um, and you will see they're all taken. Um, uh, one thing uh, um, we'd like to do, and I kind of did most of the work for Systemd now, uh, uh, now is uh, fake PCRs. So fake PCRs are not really fake, they're just not PCRs, but they have PCR-like semantics. So uh, um, this removes the limitation that there can only be 24 or 16 for, that are actually usable, usable, or actually four that are usable, um, and gives us the ability that we can use uh, TPM and V indexes. Um, I hope most of you know what NV indexes are. There. There's a little bit of memory that is uh, available on TPMs that you can use for basically anything you want. But these, uh, this memory always comes with a policy. Like you can assign a type to it, and uh, one of these types is uh, the extent type, which basically allows you to to do a, a PCR, right? Like with the exact same write semantics, exact same read semantics, and security properties. So. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, like I call them NV PCRs nowadays because it's too difficult for me to say NV index uh, based fake PCRs. This is very confusing because uh, NV indexes, as the name suggests, are non volatile, right? Like they're supposed to survive boots. Of course, PCRs are not supposed to survive boots. They're supposed to give you the guarantee that they start at zero at boot, otherwise, they would be pointless for their security properties. So, uh, yeah, these NV PCRs have this nice property that actually are reset. So even though the name says NV, they're not NV. It's basically the allocation that is NV. It's not the not the contents of the uh, stuff that is NV. Um, with this, like the the uh, uh, TCG people call PCRs beachfront property because there are so few of them, right? You have to be very careful how you use them. Uh, with this stuff, um, then suddenly they are not uh, beachfront property anymore. Everybody can have them. Um, 
Well, there's one problem with them, which is allocation. Like NV and Nexus have these numbers, um, like they don't have any other identifiers but but 32 bit numbers, basically. Um, and that's kind of icky, right? Like, because if you want to use one of them, you have to kind of allocate them. So you go to the TPM, ask for an NV index, and, and uh, it might give you one, and then you have the index number, but now you have to somehow use that index number and, and, and pass it to the early boot process because quite likely that's where you want to start measuring things. So now you have to create the, have this problem that once the system is booted up you can allocate a, a, a NV index for your additional PCRs but then how do you tell on the next boot that this is uh, uh, where these measurements should go. Uh, I implemented all this dynamic stuff and did all kind of com complex, nasty business so that I can uh, write it to the ESP, these allocations, and then use them there and everything's great. What fine, but it was really awful. I didn't like it. But thankfully, um, the TCG actually offered to um, assign us a static range of indexes because they actually do maintain a registry where they say that certain vendors get certain ranges. So uh, um, they offered to uh, assign a range to systemd. And I said, great, because that resolves us from this problem because we can basically say, okay, this is our private range, um, and we're going to define this uh, 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 NV index with that purpose. Uh, since then, uh, so we implement, uh, implemented all of this, um, put up a, 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 a website where we would say, okay, this is how many uh, NV indexes we got delegated, and this is how we're going to use them. Uh, but then they uh, um, decided that um, let's maybe assign it to Linux as a whole so that they don't have to do this again and again for all the other open source projects that might want an NV index. So what we actually ended up doing now is uh, uh, with the EU API group. I'm not sure if many of you know this is like the like a little bit like a, a small uh, GitHub repository slash website where we put specification and the registry of the PCR users and things like this, uh, which is just like writing down like low level system stuff. Um, uh, yeah, you should go to the website if you uh, don't know about this. Um, but yeah, so uh, we, uh, as it looks like, uh, like uh, we're going to have this um, NV index range uh, assigned soon to that uh, little uh, group of people, and then we can delegate this further out, like the first one would be systemd. But if anyone else needs for any open source projects private uh, ranges of NV indexes, you can basically ask us. And if you're proper open source, um, I see no reason we should ever say no. Um, yeah, so with sta static assignments, everything becomes easy because then we can basically always say, okay, this is the fixed number that we're all, always going to get and the conflicts that we have to deal with, an allocation just goes away. Um, so this basically means that NVPCRs are then basically available for everyone, which is not quite the case because um, like TPMs, like the, the, the smallest um, allowed design of TPM still has very few of them. But uh, they're definitely more than 16, right? So, uh, yeah, but still, uh, we can start measuring new stuff. Like, for example, um, with all the work that I am, uh, did for systemd to support these things, I already added like things like measuring the SM bias UUID or something like this, because it basically allows you to, to bind, because many hypervisors, many, many clouds um, initialize the SM bias UUID from some UUID that they manage with the uh, VM management stuff, um, we can suddenly have policies that bind to that. But we can also, you know, system has all these concepts, confex, uh, exportable services and containers, um, where, which are generally backed by a BM Verity file system, so you have a root hash. So we can, um, uh, because we suddenly have more room, we can uh, measure all these kind of things. And then uh, with that we have really nice, um, a really nice log of everything that happens on the system and all the files, all the disk images that end up on the system are always reflected in the, in the um, uh, PCRs and NV PCRs as, uh, as they are used, as they are attached. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is like we recently added an event log, which is like measuring is one thing. It's pretty useless though if you only measure if you don't keep a log of what you measured, right? Like because if you do analysis of uh, of uh, um, uh, like if you actually want to bind policies and predict uh, um, PCR values on next boot, you need to have some kind of database that tells you um, the current PCR hash value or NV PCR hash value um, that tells you how this actually came to be. Um, and for that, we need to keep an event log. Firmware keeps an event log up to the point where exit boot service is called, but uh, after that, um, there's nothing. Now, I mentioned this earlier that um, in user space, we we start logging all these things, so that's where we need to provide a new event log. And uh, yeah, so basically, anything the systemd um, uh, uh, measures is now immediately at the same time. Is this something weird going with the microphone? Um, 
at the, at the same time written to an event log. It implements the TCGCL spec, like common event log or something it's called. Um, it's it's an okay spec. I'm not a fan, right? Like because it has these semantics. Like for example, it keeps a record number for every entry that is stored inside of the entry, which kind of implies that when you just want to append a a entry to it, you have to count the number of entries that there were there before, right? Like which is weird for a JSON thing. But anyway, we implement this otherwise um, uh, by the word. Uh, we just leave out the bullshit, um, but this basically means that uh, it's trivial to transform it to standards compliant TCG because you basically just have to add the record numbers yourself when you read it. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you know systemd PCR log. It's like this thing uh, that allows you to do uh, disk encryption and bind it to uh, local t managed TPM policies that basically cover everything um, that is not uh, predictable by the OS vendor, but it's local to, this, to the machine, which is basically firmware stuff, uh, extension card stuff, local, I don't know, um, GPT partition table that <laughs> UFI measures if they do this and you want to lock against that, or local firmware configuration, whatever else um, there is measured. Um, and it's it's like the, yeah our event log is what uh, like it uses the firmware logs and this uh, user space log basically as a combination um, to make all its uh, choices from this event log because it's like it's supposed to be a public uh, interface that anyone can use like if you want to do your own remote attestation stuff um, we do provide this for you to to, to consume. Um, the event log comes with uh, limitations right now. Uh, there's no rotation right now. Um, like Because up to this point, all the measurements that we did kind of settled um, after the boot process was complete. Uh, we didn't need to, so that was uh, easy. But now that we have the NVPCRs, and now that we uh, can start measuring all so many more things, like containers and whatnot, and they come and go during runtime all the time, of course, uh, we have to look into this. I think I know exactly what to do um, uh, securely, right? Like that we can, like, what I kind of think we should be doing is just, yeah, we truncate the logs, we, we drop the middle part, keep the first part, because it's kind of important for for predicting early boot stuff, um, and keep the end, but then delete the middle part and replace it by an entry that basically is a hash of that, so that you have can actually always, even if you don't have the data around anymore, you, um, you can still um, do the calculations of the rest of the data and recognize it if you, if you had the data at some point somewhere. Um, uh, what's also missing is a clear strategy for KXSEC and uh, um, uh, soft reboot. I mean, I have some ideas um, uh, what we're going to do there, um, but uh, I, it's a hard problem. And uh, I keep talking to a lot of people like what we should be doing there and um, many opinions like how to handle this properly. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I have some idea there. Um, the event log, we definitely need to pass over. KXSEC isn't really good at passing things over right now, but I think uh, we can do something there. But uh, yeah, it's a solved issue that I've keep been thinking about because at Azure, for example, we do use KXSEC um, a lot. So um, there are also um, uh, APIs. One of them, APIs basically, if you want the user space um, event log, just there's a file system pass and slash run, just go for it, read it. Um, it's, uh, there's a locking protocol, like if you want to have, um, like uh, uh, make sure that you don't have to read half written JSON records, you can lock it. Um, but that's just plain Unix stuff. Um, if you want to insert your own measurements, you can do that too via the Varlink API. Varlink is just some IPC thing um, where you can add basically anything and it's reasonably uh, reasonably atomical, right? Like so it does the, 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 the extension to the PCR and the writes the event log. Um, yeah, this is the status quo. Um, to actually make uh, remote attestation really nice with all of this, I think uh, um, one thing I think I would like to add to Systemd is something like a quote generator. So basically that we have a tool um, and it just takes benefit of everything we're doing here, gets a TPM quote signed by some key um, uh, um, and then matches up the event logs, like the firmware one and the, uh, the user space one, so that it actually matches these hashes, right? Like because it's because that stuff is, is in, uh, asynchronous and a, a, a bit, it's a little bit more involved, but not too hard. Um, then optionally enriches this um, with uh, some user like user space further information, right? Like because if you get a quote, you can you have this extra field where you usually put a nonce, but we can put a nonce plus. Um, a hash of some other data, and then some, suddenly you have something like a report that describes 
um, in uh, cryptographic um, strength, basically, the state of the system, like all the software that is uh, running at that point, um, how it's booted up, all the configuration, how it's uh, running, plus any kind of uh, uh, runtime parameters that, that the OS might, uh, might uh, provide to enrich all this. Um, we actually kind of have a tool to verify all this, which is uh, the systemd PCR log thing that I talked about earlier. Systemd PCR log's purpose right now is um, about predicting um, uh, um, uh, PCR values for for disk encryption. So it's kind of like this this uh, yeah predictive uh, validation of the logs, but. Um, for uh, for remote attestation, we probably can just reuse most of the code um, because yeah, it just matches up PCRs with uh, uh, the event log. It does this right now uh, because uh, um, if we want to predict something um, for the next boot, we need to be really careful that we create policies from this that are going to work. Um, and to achieve this, we analyze uh, the current event log and match it up with uh, the gold measurements we expect, so that we are. Um, yeah, I can be sure enough that it's going to work. So anyway, yeah, so getting there is actually probably not that hard. It's just mostly adding a little bit of glue. Um, and then we kind of have, uh, you can, if you want, um, use um, the code currently in systemd PCR log to do the remote side of the remote mode attestation. That said, um, I don't really think the business of systemd is so much to do that. Um, uh, I would always assume that it's uh, other people who do this, right? Like uh, if you do uh, remote attestation, um, write your own server that just uses the data we generate, but not necessarily also use systemd tools to analyze the data. Um, I think I'm running most of, out of time. Um, this is kind of my last slide. Um, I probably would skip that slide if anyone has questions. Um, otherwise, um, I can do that slide. There's. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. So the, the fake PCRs that you mentioned have a particular problem that you didn't mention, which is um, the TPM will attest to the creation of all the objects, and a lot of attestation systems actually use this creation data. Currently, uh, fake PCRs can't be used as part of the creation data. It's one of the big reasons, so you can't attest the creation state of the objects. I think if you combine it with what you're planning for your quote, as in we do an immediate creation, then quote the fake PCRs, you can match the timestamps and almost ensure that we do actually have the creation data for everything. But I was just going to ask you if you had actually considered this problem. I know System D doesn't use this data at the moment. We don't, uh, uh, we don't do um, quotes right now, right? Like this is a plan for the future. I talked about this in, in long detail with some guy from TCG uh, because there are many ways how you can do a quote on a TPM, right? Um, and we need to do the right one because we actually want to cover the NV indexes and things like this. And uh, basically I can't really give you an answer except that he basically told me what to do and I kind of just following what he does because I am not a cryptographer, not a TPM person. I'm just trying to make the best of what people tell me. So uh, I can't give you a good answer. Just a quick question. How big is this quote and um, log snapshot? Uh, well, that's a good question. Like, depends probably on what you're going to measure. Right now, the logs are not that long, right? Like, if you ever have seen systemd PCR log, that, that, that screenshot thing, you can see, I don't know, has like 64 entries and it's a little bit of a JSON, so it's not going to be big. Of course, um, if you run it, your system for, for, for a year and you uh, uh, apply containers and they're actually measured and you, you run containers, you sysx config, blah, 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 that's going to grow. But again, for the rotation, that, the solution to that is the rotation. But uh, um, it's not that much data, right? Like, um, so I would assume like per day you get a couple of kilobytes, and not more. But I, again, this really depends on how much stuff you do in your machine node. But for my feeling, I wouldn't expect that much. Hi, um, somewhat general question. Are you familiar with FIT, flat image tree? With what? F uh, FIT, F-I-T, flat image. Oh, that's like this UKI thing that isn't UKI? Yeah, and I just want. <laughs> well, I'm not familiar, no. Okay. Never heard of it. Uh, um, I, I'm just, I mean, you know, faced with another booting standard, and I'm just wondering what's the advantages, disadvantages of the two, but maybe something oh. to think about. Of, of UKIs? Well, it's not quite the topic of this talk. But, uh, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I can't make any comments about FIT because, um, except for having heard the name, um, and uh, Luca 
telling me about it or something. I don't know where Luca is. Um, uh, I have no idea about fit. Um, I think uh, uh, UKI is probably a lot more modern, powerful, and cover a lot more ground. But then again, I have no fucking idea. Thank you. How much time do we have? Like, I mean, if we have time to waste, I would still do this one slide. OK, time's out. Time's out? One last one, please. Yeah, so uh, in case of uh, unsealing the secrets, uh, how will you preserve the, um, the measurements or update the measurements or predict updating the measurements uh, in case of changing of UFI firmware? Did you, did you have like a relation with FWPD or how, how this is planned to do? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, uh, so, uh, um, yeah, like with this system DPCR log thing um, is supposed to, to help with this, right? Like, because it, you basically give the system PCR log these gold measurements, like little JSON files that describe what the measurements are that would be expected for a component and then lost alternatives and kind of things. For firmware uh, stuff, uh, we cannot assume that we'll have this data, right? Um, uh, there are two approaches. Like, first of all, I started the discussion with FW update D people that maybe they can convince the firmware vendors to provide this data because they provide data like it, which is which is not the data I want, but it is at least something they provide. Some of them, like the high quality vendors, provide uh, the uh, expected value of PCR zero on PCs. Um, it's not the data I want. I want the not the value. I want the measurements, um, and I want it for any PCR that they touch because they do touch more. Um, but I don't know. So, so basically, there is a chance that we might convince them. Um, we just need to, uh, like, I hope that the Richard Hughes and so on can can uh, make this happen. But of course, uh, this will only go going to be high quality vendors, right? Um, if we have this data, perfect, right? Like, because we never have to open up a window, a time window where we we lose in security. For the cases where we do not have that. Um, and pre alloc, like you basically, if we expect a firmware update to happen, like FW update D knows this, right? After all, um, then we would relax the the policies, and then uh, this was basically is one command to system to pre alloc to say basically remove the firmware policies from uh, uh, um, uh, the firmware expected expected measurements from the policy. Then we run the policy um, generator. It will remove this. We'll lock against everything else that's, that the, it's still supposed to be locking against, but kicks out the, the firmware stuff. Um, then you reboot, and by default, um, uh, uh, the idea is basically that on every single boot, you lock this down again, right? Like, and uh, system PCR lock is written in this item potent style, so that uh, when it detects that everything's locked down, it doesn't do anything at boot then. But if it realizes um, that oh, I'm coming up in a way where the firmware wasn't um, locked down, I'm going to rebuild the, the 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 policy and lock it down again, right? So the idea basically is yeah, uh, we do what Windows does which is uh, relax the policy for a moment um, and uh, lock it down. But I think we're actually in a better situation there than Windows is because uh, we can do it more pinpointed, right? And uh, yeah, we don't have to change uh, super blocks or anything like this because we store our policy in, in the TPM. But yeah, if you, if you don't have the data, it's the best thing you can do. Would be good if, if we don't have uh, okay. that. It was a question. Thanks a lot. Time is out. Okay.